Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. I finally had some clear nights and started to use my observatory. One of my first targets this season was uh, the Veil Nebula, or Caldwell 33. For this image, I'm focusing on the Eastern Veil Nebula, and I'm going to compare it to an image I took last season, one of the first images I ever took as an astrophotographer with my Canon uh, 60D DSLR camera. Would you look at this winter landscape? It's minus six degrees Celsius here at the moment. And the prognosis for tonight is clear all night. image acquisition this season, I've converted over to Nina from Astrophotography Tool because of the many features that are available in that software. When capturing this object, I gathered 20 light frame of each filter that is H alpha and sulfur 2 and oxygen 3. The plan is to do two images, one with the classic Hubble palette SHO and one with the HOO palette. And that will give it the distinct deep blue red blend. In this image I will focus on the HOO image and I will return later for uh, an SHO image. This also means that I'm not going to use the S2 data in this processing, just the H alpha and the O3. I will take you through the first steps in the linear phase of the processing using the uh, H alpha light frame. So the first step is to do a dynamic crop. I've done that already on this image and that means uh, cropping the uh, outer edges of the image to remove any stacking artifacts. The next step is to do a dynamic background extraction or an automatic background extraction. You can compare the two. There is not that big of a difference. That is because it's fairly simple for PixInsight to remove the background on an object like this. The nebulosity does not cover the entire light frame. The next step is to use linear fit to equalize the brightness of the frames between the different filters. And you do that by selecting your reference frame and in this case I'm going to use the H alpha as a reference. 
and then I simply drag this triangle over to the other frames. And when it has finished, it will be adjusted towards the reference frame. Next in line is deconvolution. That can be a complex procedure. Uh, if you want to know how to perform this in detail, you can check out my PixInsight uh, four-part processing tutorial. On the screen now to the left is uh, the image before deconvolution and on the right the image after deconvolution. And as a final step you will stretch the image moving from the linear phase to the non-linear phase. You can do this manually by using the histogram transformation or you can use an automated uh, script such as the uh, easy soft stretch. If you are going to use the easy soft stretch, just open the script and then apply it to the image that you want. and the stretching is completed. Moving on to the nonlinear phase. The next step that I like to do is to make starless versions of the images and at the same time create star masks to separate uh, the stars and be able to use those in the end of the processing. You can uh, use the Starnet or Starnet2 feature and just drag the triangle over to the image. Now at this stage, as you see, uh, there's a lot of artifacts left uh, from the process. To be able to fix the background here, I would suggest using a range mask using range selection under processes and you can adjust the mask here if you click on preview and you drag this left and right adjust it add some fuzziness to the mask and some smoothness until you get it exactly the way you want it something like this so the goal is to mask the nebulosity uh, that you will be able to process uh, or work on the background without di disturbing the nebulosity now when you have created the range mask this was not the best but you get the idea you apply it to the image and you invert the mask so that it will protect the nebulosity and not the background. You can also uh, disable show mask. Uh, that way it's easier for you to manipulate this image further using uh, curves transformation for example. The next step is to make the HOO image. For that, um, I'm using Pixel Math. And we're going to use a special form. So for red channel, I'm going to use 1.5 times the master HA starless subtracting the master O3 starless. 
for green channel, I'm going to use 0 0.75 times master 03 starless. And for the blue channel, 1.0 multiplied by master 03 starless. And I'm executing this. Now, as you can see, I got a very deep blue red image, even though the background is a bit bluish as well. This can be fixed later on in this editing process. Let me just show you if I've done, if I would have done a simple HOO combination. It would have looked something like this. And that image is not very appealing, even though you might be able to edit it to achieve the same results. Okay, I will quickly take you through the steps of the nonlinear process. And if you want the details, you can, like I said, check out my Pixinsight four part tutorial. First, we have the master file. The one that we just got when combining. I made some slight changes with curves and a range mask just to adjust the background a bit, removing some of the artifacts. After that, I ran the SCNR, removing some of the green. It's a very subtle change, you won't see that big of a difference. I applied some color masks, adjusting the red ever so slightly and also the blue. After that, I ran some sharpening with the multi scale linear transformation and the unsharp mask just to sharpen the details slightly here. I don't know if it's visible or not. It's a slight and subtle change in the details of the image. I'm usually very careful not to overdo it with these tools. And the next step is to denoise the image using TGB denoise. And you can see that there is a big difference between these two images. This is very noisy and this is uh, very good, I would say. I really like the TGB denoise. It's a bit complicated too. You need to create a TGB mask and a luminance mask uh, using the TGV denoise process. And as a final step, I adjusted the uh, background color from this bluish tint to a more black tint. Now, in order to make a final image, I will need, of course, to add some stars to it. And since I don't have any LRGB stars, I will have to settle for the HA stars. I'm not really that fond of SHO stars. So this is the HA stars. 
and I've reduced them slightly using the histogram transformation tool. And now we can combine these two starless and stars using the uh, pixel map and the formula is something like this stars multiplied by starless with the uh, tilde character and you get something like this Now I've also made some last adjustments to the curves and the coloring and brightness of the background. I don't want to have it too black. So I'm going to open up the final image for you here and show you. It's not that big, but as you can see, I made the background just a little bit brighter and also the nebulosity here and the overall image is not as dark and black as uh, this final results. Now this image, like I said in the beginning, it is 20 light frames with H alpha and 20 light frames with oxygen 3 at 5 minutes each. That is 3.3 hours of total exposure. Now the images that I'm going to show you I took last season and that was my first season and uh, these were captured one month after I've tried astrophotography for the very first time. And it is two hours of exposure with the Canon 60D camera. And these are two processing variations. I did this one first and it did not turn out so good and I did this later on and I thought it was pretty good at the time <laughs> but in comparison to this image I would say not. You can compare this section for example. That was it for this video. I'm going to make a lot more videos during this season and more of PixInsight processing videos and more of Nina tutorial videos. And I might have a surprise or two in store for you. We will see. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. And until the next video I wish you have clear skies.